With the third pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Houston Texans select Will Anderson Jr., linebacker, Alabama. Oh, and remember, they have Cleveland's first round pick next year. Yes, so, they still have a ton of picks. And I yes. have to assume that's part of the thinking here yeah. mm -hmm. is that we have all of this capital. Eventually, it needs to become players. And this is the best defense player in the draft. There's danger in thinking yes. that way. Yes, <laughs> yes, there is. Because no player is a safe bet. No yeah. player is a sure thing. But coming away with Dane, arguably a guy who has the chance to be the best offensive player in this draft and now the best defensive player in this draft yeah. for a fan base, for a, just a franchise in general that – I think it was easy to ignore yeah. for, yes. for a pretty yeah. long time yeah. here. It is impossible to ignore what they've done in the last 20 minutes or so. No. And, and even the last few months, it hasn't been the most optimistic because they lost the number one overall pick. Yep. And it's okay. Now we're stuck at two. We're not going to get our first option. Uh, the the ownership really stepped up and the, the front office to make this happen. You get our, maybe the top offensive player on your board, maybe the top defensive player on your board. Mm -hmm. Building blocks that you can really – just build your franchise around yes. guys that are cornerstones. And so this is a, uh, obviously I'm, I'm, you know, it's a big moment for this franchise. It is. They, when I did the Bryce Young breakdown, again, when I looked at team fits, I said, the one that I said, the Texans, why they need to sell tickets. This yeah. sells tickets. And oh, I yeah. mean that in a good way. It sounds stupid. It sounds, you know, major league from the eighties or everything. Talk about the Cleveland, the Cleveland team. But here it's like, no, they, they really do. They need to build goodwill. D'Amico Ryan starts with that. The former rookie of the year for the Houston Texans now being their coach. But now getting like like guys that actually people know too, the general fan. Uh, Will Anderson uh, played some t probably Texas A&M over the years. Yeah. You know, so I'm sure there's some fans that recognize him. But now you're getting true needle movers, and that's what you want to get. I figured that they might go with a guy from Alabama and they might go with a quarterback. I thought it would be one player originally, Bryce Young, when they had, <laughs> like maybe had the number two <laughs> pick. But now they ended up getting both in just different ways that I originally anticipated. But I, I love this because they need needle movers, and this is a needle mover. It's also common sense, right? We talked about if they took Will Anderson, too, would they trade back up for a quarterback? They yeah. Common sense ring. <laughs> yes. They went yes. the quarterback at two. They yes. didn't mess around. Yep. They didn't get cute. Just in case. Yeah, yeah. you take yep. your quarterback at yep. two, and then let's go try to make that trade. Yep. They got it done. They get the defensive stud and Will Anderson, awesome. who, you know – I. If he was able to come out last year, he would have been the number one overall pick to the Jaguars. Mm -hmm. I, and that, I think that would have happened. Now he's the number three overall pick here to the Texans. Uh, that's uh, If you're another team in AFC uh, South, you're looking at this saying, eh, you know, Texans got better today. Yeah, they got a lot right. better today. Like right. that's uh, – this this is this is not ideal for uh, the Texans aren't just that other team anymore. That this is something they're building down there. We talk about the edge draft, and really a lot of people that have watched Will Anderson, especially this year, was how he was used, and maybe not a role that he'll be used at the NFL. Yeah. He inside shade the tackle called a four eye, and what does D'Amico Ryan's and what does he do with defensive linemen? They let them pin their ears back yeah. wide and go, and that's perfect. That's I think that'll unlock him even more. And also what I think Will Anderson is best at, and this sounds very niche, but this is the show, this is why you guys tune in, is when they run games and twists, when he is the penetrator, he is exceptional. He's a true oh, yeah. ace on those. That's what they do. Dude, that is so their much. So just much. chaos creation. Because they only rush four, and that's their way to generate chaos. And he's amazing at that. I think that I think that's just great. Did, did you know, uh, Twitter told me Will Anderson had an off year this year. Uh, <laughs> 17 tackles for loss, yeah. 10 sacks. And do you know why people are saying that? Oh, because as a sophomore, 34 and a half tackles for loss, 17 and a half sacks. Yeah. So what he's done the last two years as a disruptor is phenomenal. And again, I, as much as I like him as a pass rusher, I think he's a better run defender. I agree. I, I think the way that he can play the edge and the way he reads, breaks down blocks, makes plays, is it's special. It's, it's really, yep. really uh, – it's something that I don't think – Alabama hasn't had that, that, that edge rusher under Nick Saban. This is that guy. This yeah. is this is the difference maker, and obviously the Texans agreed. Uh, as much as they gave up, I mean, yeah, good for Arizona. That's what Arizona needed. Right? Yeah, I mean that the draft, the trade compensation for Arizona is exactly what you want yes. out of that. For to move down for a team that isn't trading up for a quarterback and to get an extra first next year, essentially another first round pick and yeah. a thirty third overall mm -hmm. pick, and then only move down nine spots. It's a huge, huge win for it. where the Cardinals are right now. They need it so badly. They, they don't need just one player. They need dozens of players. They need yes. depth. They need needle movers, whatever term you want to use. Every type of starter, every tier of starter, they need that. And they need it at every position outside of quarterback, which is the, the funny part about that team. So I thought that was like good for them. Like, honestly, mm -hmm. good for them. Like, that's I, a good argument. It's too much to give up for one defensive player. <laughs> I mean, it's a lot to give up. When is the last time we saw something like this? Future first round picks. 
teams yeah. are moving up in the draft for non quarterbacks. Yeah. Uh, Sammy Watkins yeah. comes to mind. Cool. I yeah. believe that uh, the the Bills went from like eleven to four or something like that. Maybe like, nine to four. It was, it was like seven to four. Seven to four, yeah. but yeah. it, it yeah. included a future first round yeah. pick. Didn't yeah. It? yeah, for the when the yeah. Browns moved back yep. and then they moved back again to Justin Gilbert. We won't talk about and that. that, that that's <laughs> important. Uh, but yeah, and that's uh, that, that that's a good call. It, we don't see it often. Players. Doesn't happen that often. No. Julio yeah. obviously is an yeah, extreme yeah. example, but right. the Falcons were coming from the twenties. Yeah, yes. that included a future first round pick, and I think a lot more. But this is a rarity. So if even if we're excited, and this is the bet you're having to make if you're the Texans, right? You are about to win the post draft press conference. Oh yeah. yeah! When you can trap both those guys out, they're going to hang up those jerseys next to each other. That is a big moment for your franchise yeah. if you are trying to just incite some excitement. But on a value level, it is a big, big swing for one non quarterback in a single draft. <laughs>